Okay, so in this video, we will consider our first example of a trigonometric substitution when trying to find an indefinite integral. Let me make a few comments first. Suppose we had the following integral. So x over the square root of 1 minus x squared dx. Now if you look at this integral, it's a fairly simple integral as if you differentiate 1 minus x squared, you get negative 2x, which up to negative 2 is simply x. And so you can solve this integral using a simple u substitution, letting u be 1 minus x squared. Take the differential on both sides. So the differential of u is the u equal the differential of 1 minus x squared. The derivative is negative 2x times, of course, dx. And you see on the top you have x dx. And so divide by, <coughs> sorry, multiply by negative 1 over 2. And so you get negative 1 half du is simply x dx. And you'll have a very simple integral, as this will become quite simply the root of u, so 1 over root of u. And as I've said, x dx is negative 1 half du. So pull the negative 1 half up front, rewrite 1 over root of u as e to the minus 1 half. Use the power rule, and in the end go back in terms of x, and you're done. So a very straightforward integral. What if I change the x for an x cubed? Would that really make the problem any harder? Now it may look harder, but if you think of it, if you factor from x cubed an x, then this will become the integral of x squared over the root of 1 minus x squared x dx. And this can be replaced now easily in terms of u x squared, well, send x squared on this side, so you'll have that x squared is quite simply 1 minus u. And so replace x squared by 1 minus u over the square root of 1 minus x squared, the square root of u, times x dx, negative 1 half du. And once again, this is very straightforward. Factor the negative one half up front, divide through, use the power rule twice, and in the end, go back in terms of x, and that completes the integral. So two very straightforward integrals. But what if I replace x now by x squared? And you can try to find the antiderivative using a u substitution, and you will see that it's not going to work. And now, we'll try to see what happens if we make a trigonometric substitution. But keep in mind that only use a trigonometric substitution if you absolutely have no other option. So always think of possibly using a, trick, a, a u sub first. And if that fails, then use a trigonometric substitution. As we could have used a trig sub here and here, but we can do much simpler with a simple u substitution. So our next example is one where a simple u substitution fails, and so we now have to use a trigonometric substitution. So let's see. We're trying to integrate x squared over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So if you remember, 1 minus sine squared is cos squared, which will cancel the square root. And so we let x be here sine of theta. We take the differential, so dx is cos of theta d theta. And again, 1 minus x squared is 1 minus sine squared, which is cosine squared of theta. And so the square root of 1 minus x squared 
is the square root of cosine squared and the square root and the perfect square cancel each other out which leaves us with cosine of theta. So now let's see what happens to the integral. We integrate, so x squared. Well, if you square x, you get sine squared. Over the root of 1 minus x squared, that is cosine of theta, times dx, which is cosine of theta, d theta. And now, we can obviously simplify, cos over cos cancels, and that leaves us with the integral of sine squared of theta. And so you see, when you make a trigonometric substitution, when you replace the old variable as a trigonometric function of the new variable, then the original integral becomes a trigonometric integral. And this, we can evaluate systematically. And if you remember, when you have an integral involving a single sine with a single even power, we have to use the half angle formula. And sine squared of theta, if you recall, is 1 minus cosine of 2 theta over 2. So factors of 1 half So if you integrate 1, you get theta times 1 half, so it's theta over 2, or a half theta, minus 1 half, 1 half. And by the chain rule, if you integrate cos of 2 theta, you get sine of 2 theta over 2, plus, of course, the arbitrary constant of integration. So we have now 1 half theta. minus, well, one-half times one-half is a quarter, minus a quarter sine of two theta plus c. So we're done with the integration, but we have to return our final answer to a function of x. And we could be here naive and say, well, okay, if x is sine of theta, then compose both sides with the arc sine, and so arc sine of x is the arc sine of sine of theta, which of course leaves simply theta. And you could replace theta in both terms, here and here, by arc sine of x, and leave your answer as is. But this is not the best possible answer. Every time that you make a trigonometric substitution, and in the end you have a trigonometric function of theta, the new variable, you can always find a way to express it in terms of x, but without a trigonometric function, an inverse trigonometric function. So I'm saying here we can do better than sine of 2 times arc sine of x. The question is how? Well, using a trigonometric identity. So first, let's recall that sine of a plus b is sine of a times cos of b plus cos of a times sine of b. And now you might wonder, well, how is this useful with sine of 2 theta? Well, quite simply think of sine of 2 theta as sine of theta plus theta. Then you get sine of theta, cos of theta, plus cos of theta, sine of theta. But if you look, both terms are the same, sine times cos, sine times cos. So what we have is 2 sine of theta, cos of theta. And I will replace, and you'll see why with the, this substitution, that sine of 2 theta is 2 sine theta cos theta, and with constructing an appropriate right angle triangle, we can 
give our final answer in a slightly simpler form. So if I call our integral i, then i equals one half theta minus a quarter, and now we're replacing sine of two theta is two sine theta cos theta. plus of course C, and now let me construct a right angle triangle. So sine theta is x, and let me rewrite x as x over 1. And if you recall, by definition, if you have a right triangle, sine is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So if I construct a right triangle, where the angle at the base is theta, then the sine of theta will be the opposite, which is x, over the hypotenuse, which is 1. And by Pythagoras' theorem, since this squared plus this squared is 1 squared, this will be the square root of the hypotenuse squared, which is 1, minus the height squared, which is x squared. And you can double check if you square this, you get 1 minus x squared, plus x squared gives you 1, which is 1 squared. And now, from this triangle, we can easily get sine of theta and cos of theta. By definition, sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, so it's x over 1, which is simply x, which we already knew, but cos of theta is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which of course is simply the root of 1 minus x squared. And now we can give our final answer. Here, when you have a function of theta without a trigonometric function, then you have no better option than replacing theta by the inverse trig function of x. So theta is arc sine of x. So we have 1 half arc sine of x. That's the best we can do. Minus, well, 2 over 4 is 1 half. And now we replace sine of x, uh, sine of theta, sorry. Sine of theta is x. Cos of theta, root of 1 minus x squared. Plus, of course, c. And now we have the simplest possible final answer. And again, remember that if we had been naive, we would have left the sign here and would have written sine of two times and just replacing theta by arc sine of x. So that would have been a quarter sine of two times arc sine of x. And now we have much better as this part of the answer no longer contains either a trig or an inverse trigonometric function. And this will always happen. So when you make your trig substitution and you obtain a trigonometric integral, you find the antiderivative. In the end, every trig function of theta, you will always be able to replace it by a function of x without any trig or trigonometric or inverse trigonometric function. But if there is an expression that does not contain a trig function of theta, but just a theta alone, then you will be stuck with an inverse trigonometric function. And that's it.